Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here as ever, especially because today we are going to try forging these giant end mills. Now, by many people's standards, these might not be giant end mills. To my standards, they are giant end mills. This is how they compare to my most used end mill size. This is a four millimeter end mill. This here is a 32 millimeter end mill. This here, I don't even know. Okay, that's an inch and three quarter end mill, 45 millimeters. And the cutting part of the end mill is over four inches long. This end mill here was given to me by my good friend Jason from Fireball Tools when he visited a few months ago. And he said, hey Alec, I want you to have this gigantic end mill because I want to see if you can forge something from it. Which made me think, can I forge anything from this giant end mill? Now, not to sacrifice only his things and to sacrifice some of mine, this 32 millimeter end mill, this is one of mine. We're gonna start with this, then we're gonna move to that. First of all, we've got to think about what material it is. So let's have a look. This one here, ah, oh, would you look at that? Didn't need to measure it. It's an inch and a quarter diameter with an inch and a quarter shank. It's M42. It's made in Spain. M42, this one here. Let's have a look. Uh, Clarkson, 32 millimeter, England. Hydra Tools, high speed steel, CO8. Now. What I think that means is both of these are a variant of high-speed steel. Let's have a Google. M42 high-speed steel PDF. Carbon. 1.05% carbon. That's pretty close to a lot of the steels we work. 1% carbon, that's only 0.2% carbon higher than the normal steel that I use making my Damascus, the 1080 steel. In fact, this falchion here, the one we made in July with uh, intern Alex from the Netherlands, this is 1095, which is 0.95% carbon pretty close to the high-speed steel in that regard, and this forged just fine. So that's good. Tungsten, 1.5% tungsten. Well, I don't know about, oh. I definitely don't know about the tungsten, but you know what else I don't know about? I don't know how the 8% cobalt is gonna do for forging. I am looking at it some more. There's 0.35% silicon, 3.75% chromium, 9.5%. 5% molybdenum. Okay, now that's a lot of alloying elements, and the more alloying elements you add into something, the, the, the little more uh, foreign territory working it becomes. Now, in my understanding in the manufacture of steel, you've got to forge it. You know, this is steel, which is good. You've got to forge it because you've got to take that ingot that gets made and you've got to roll it down into the bars that are then gonna get sold, because high-speed steel, Got to get sold as a bar of steel somewhere for someone to machine into this high-speed steel cutter. But all those alloying elements, for certain, are gonna make it extremely difficult to heat treat. Might also make it very difficult to forge. This was M42, I'm just gonna look at high-speed steel, this. 0.8 to 0.9% carbon, that's close. 0.4% silicon, that's good. Manganese, 0.4%, 1% cobalt, da 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 oh. 6% tungsten. That's gotta make it very difficult. So, this seems like it's gonna be a little bit more forgiving than that, but I wanna see how it compares to the normal steel that we work, just mild steel that I've got in the rack. So let's grab some steel. So I think, what is gonna be the biggest stock we have? This here, this is 4340. Ah, here we go. Here is some one inch square, 25 millimeter square. Let's put this in the saw, give that a tighten, bring the saw down, turn it on. So that is some mild steel. Same stuff, this welding table is made from, same thing any kind of normal standard structural steel is made from. It has about 0.2% carbon and then tiny dribs and drabs of other stuff. It's pretty simple and it's the baseline of a relatively easy to forge steel alloy. Steel's now hot, we're gonna bring it out of the forge and we're gonna see how it forges. Three and a half pound hammer. Okay, so forges just like I'd expect. It's mild steel. You can move it around with a hand hammer. It stays together, it's not breaking. I'm gonna put this somewhere safe to cool. And here's the moment of truth. This is the hopefully, I imagine, more forgiving high-speed steel, 32 millimeter British made milling end mill. Into the forge we go. 
Here we go. Oh my goodness. That is pretty tough stuff. Wow, that just fights you when you're trying to hammer it. That is some tough stuff. I'm gonna take another heat. On this heat, we are going to try the Anyang power hammer. We're gonna see how it tackles the high-speed steel end mill. It is hot for heat number two. That is definitely forging. Pretty, uh, pretty tough stuff. But this old girl, the Anyang Power Hammer, made short work of it. So since it's still working, I'm gonna have some more fun with it. Now I've got to see what fun things I can do with this. This stuff is insane. It's almost like trying to hit cold steel. That is unbelievable. Anyway, in case you're wondering what I'm making, I'm making a hook, because I don't have anything to hang my dish towels on. So, I haven't forged in a while. I needed to make a hook. I figured we'd just make the hook out of the end mill. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that there, that's one high-speed kitchen mill. Golly, that was terrible. I tried. So with the hook forged out of the high-speed steel, by the way, I'm definitely not gonna drill the holes to mount the hook. I'm, I'm gonna find another solution for that. I'm probably gonna weld on a little tab on the back and drill holes in that. But with the hook forged from the high-speed steel, it's now time to try the M42. There's lots more in this, and I tell you what I really wanna make out of this. I just wanna make a squished end mill so badly. So, provided this little forge, we're gonna give this a good squishing. Oh no! I bent it. That's not good, and this is not like normal solid steel where you can fix that. I might have just ruined this whole video. Okay, I bent the thing. I think I've ruined the video because I wanted to make this little squish thing. So I apologize about that. But I think the way we can round out this video is with 25 tons of force from the Anyang Hydraulic Press. As they say, when in doubt, give it a squish. Woo! We're making abstract art. I am really sorry, Jason. I destroyed your end mill. <laughs> Time for the touch mark. Super fun playing with high speed steel and M42. Great fun. I ended up marking Fireball on, the, on that little paperweight. I'm gonna have to get that back to Jason. Make sure you check out his channel, Fireball Tools. He's been putting out some, some more great content. It's been a huge amount of fun having you here. This is, this is great fun messing with materials. Right now, we're in the midst of working on a cavalry saber though, and we are trying to make one awesome cavalry saber. So subscribe if you're new so that you can follow along with this series as it evolves and all of the content that we're gonna be putting out here in the future. It's been a pleasure as always having you here. Hope you've enjoyed, it's been a lot of fun. I'll see you on the next episode. And before you go, make sure you head over to alexsteelshop.com. We have some brand new merch, American Steel. Very appropriate, lots of fun. Thank you guys, be sure to check out that merch at alexsteelshop.com. See you on the next one, bye-bye.